Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump into another Bible study today. Today we're going to do a little bit about uh, you are your brother's keeper. That's what we're told on today. You've heard it said before, you know, am I my brother? You are. As a Christian, if you've accepted Jesus Christ, you can look in there so many times he talks about loving your brother, loving your neighbor, showing love, to be loving on folks. Well, in order to love on folks, you need to be able to provide for them. And here's a verse to back it up. 1 Timothy 5, 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. An infidel headed for hell if you don't provide for your house. That's basically what he's saying. You have to provide for your family, for those you love, for your people. You got to do this. There is no way around it. It's in the book. Now, in order to provide, you need to be able to work. You need to be able to study and know how to be a good steward of the things that God has provided you. You have to be aware of what's going on with your brothers and sisters. You have to be willing to take care of the sick, of the homeless, of the widows, of the orphans. I dare say we should defend the weak because there are a lot of people out there that are getting preyed on and injured by the strong. And we as Christians, we have an obligation to stand up, if nothing else but verbally, and let the world know when something is wrong and take care of those who cannot take care of themselves. We must be bold. If we are to change this world for God in Jesus' name, we must be bold in our faith. We must be bold in our walk. And we must be our brother's keeper. Now, there's another verse I wanted to jump into. It's back in the Old Testament. It's Proverbs 22, verse 7. The rich rule over the poor. And the borrower is servant to the lender. Look, that's the system that we have. It's been out there for millennia. People that have rule over people that don't. If you're going to get a piece of the pie, you've got to work for it. Unless you're born into it, you're going to have to find a way to work for it. You're going to have to study the system. You've got to make it happen. I've never got a job from a poor person. A poor person has never fed my child. So, we must work in order to make money, which means we have to deal with rich people and we should not be hating rich people or people that have or boss people. We are to be good stewards we are to let god's light shine through us in our daily activities in our work and everything that we do so when you're out there relating to the people that have and you're trying to get a piece of pie to take care of your family bring home the bread and bacon to your babies you need to let god's light shine through you be humble spread the seeds you know plant little seeds and they will grow into great mighty oaks of faith don't give up easily you know i know the days get hard i know work gets hard <laughs> funny story i saw a video this week they built this ai robot two-legged two-armed robot just to pick up boxes from one conveyor belt turn around and set them on another conveyor belt well, the story is, after 15 minutes, this AI robot, after doing so many repetitions, decided it wasn't worth it, that work was not worth it, there was no hope, and he shut down 
they had a video of him just falling down on the floor. He just turned himself off. Well, I mean, <laughs> if an artificially intelligent robot machine don't like work, we sure are not going to like work. I mean, it is not as smart as us yet, but it still decided, hey, this ain't cool. And he just turned off. He went home. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I did. I really did. But, you know, in order for us to all be good stewards, let me, let me get into this a little bit more. We've got to educate ourselves, number one. But as we learn and we grow in knowledge on the how to provide, we must educate our spouses, our children, our extended family, our congregations, so that we can all be better stewards and we can all provide better things for everyone. We have a lot of cripple. We have a lot of mentally challenged. They all need to be taken care of. We don't need to push those people to the side. We don't need to ignore those people. We should be reaching out to those wonderful souls in every way that we can. That is what God would want us to do. God is pro-life. Every ounce of life, He is all about it. And we are their keepers. If you are able to take care of someone, do it. It don't matter if you're going to get paid, if you're going to get some kind of treasure from doing it. It is the right thing to do to reach out and try to help someone as much as possible. Especially if they're not going to ever be able to return the favor. But when you borrow money and they charge you interest, you're losing. You're losing valuable assets that can go towards helping others. We need to know how to use money. We need to know how to grow money so that we can take that percentage out and use it. If you don't have time, give it to the church and elect church leaders that can use it correctly. You don't have to, to do it all, but we do need the funds to strengthen God's kingdom here on earth so that we can fight the war against evil because we are at war against evil, against the devil and all his minions. We are in a battle every day. And they want you to think, oh, money's evil. No, money is not evil. The love of money, greed, that is evil. When you're using it for the purposes of God's kingdom, you can do that. When you're using it for the purpose of providing for your family, for your extended family, for your friends, for the crippled, for the poor, for the homeless, for the, the widows and the orphans, those are godly purposes. Those are holy purposes. When you're doing the right thing, it will pay off. Don't let the devil trip you up. Don't borrow more than you can pay back. I know it. I get passionate about this because, hey, look, I made some mistakes last year and I'm paying for them this year. That's just the way it is. There's no biting bones about it, you know. You live, you learn. Anybody who's doing stuff is going to make mistakes. Now, I'm going to be able to come out of mine. I believe with all my heart the good Lord's going to bring me back out of it. And I'm going to get back up on top. He's got a mission. He's got a plan. It's going to get better and better as time goes on. And I can't wait to see the great things that the good Lord has in store. You know, you hear so much negative stuff out there today. This is going bad. This is going bad. Fed now is coming. We're not going to have cash. Look, stop focusing on what all's going on out there. And focus on what's going on in here with you and your family. And what y'all can do and what jesus wants you to do then you'll start finding some positivity 
and some happiness to build yourself and your family up because if you take that mess home to the family about all the negativity our rates are down if you're a trucker the economy's crashing if you're just out there watching how everything's happening with fuel prices and the wars don't take that mess home before you go in that house sit down for a second think about the good things that are going on think about how to go in there and bring your family up don't be a downer don't be mr negativity it can be such a great blessing to your family when you come in that house and and you're exuding god's positivity and grace Anyway, that's it for today. God bless, and I will catch y'all on the next ride.